Hey there, my name is Thomas Manning with the Rundown on Movies and Meet Me in the Movies. Recently, as a part of the Fantasia Film Festival, I had the opportunity to perform a Zoom interview with the directors behind the documentary You Cannot Kill David Arquette. I got to speak with David Darg and Price James. It was really awesome talking with them, so I hope you guys enjoy the interview. And be sure to check out You Cannot Kill David Arquette. It's just a fantastic documentary on so many levels. Thanks so much for watching. All right, so just looking at this partnership between you, to, between you two, it's really interesting. Uh, David, uh, with a background in reporting for BBC and CNN on natural disasters and wars, and you have a degree in philosophy from Oxford, and then, you know, Price, you usually specialize in comedy and satire. So how have your two different perspectives and kind of points of view on art and the world how did that impact your approach to telling the story with uh, David Arquette? Well, yeah, man. It's worth knowing we've, kind of, we've been friends for decades. Um, and being such good friends, but with such diverse skill sets uh, from the outset, you know, when, when, when the production came together, we knew that we had such sort of, uh, that we together our kind of our taste was so similar but then our skill sets would be like you know we'd have a great relationship as far as what we wanted to do dog coming from a sort of more documentary uh, background and myself more from comedy and genre and i guess that that is the film in itself it is this kind of it's a fused um very modern take on what a documentary can be and it's sort of uh, over the, you know, the kind of um, over the sort of two years we've been shooting, knowing from the, from the beginning, basically, that we wanted a, a classic, you know, we wanted a redemption story um, and maybe leaning into some of the tropes of those, uh, those movies, you know, the sort of the more retro action sports movie combined with a sort of more humanitarian, you know, observational uh, documentary. So I think that, that, kind of that world where it meets is what's so interesting about what we've, what we've, what we've made. And uh, just getting David Arquette to really open up, um, get this really vulnerable side of him. How challenging was that? Was he kind of an open book or did you kind of have to pry back a few layers to get him to really just show himself? I mean, fortunately for us, David was a very open book <clears throat> um, because we certainly weren't the first ones to, pry into his personal life he's always been very open i mean a lot of the time probably more than he should be like he's he's infamous for some of his under the influence phone calls with howard stern and things like that so like david's dirty laundry has been out there long before our production um and you know he's just, you know he's classic hollywood as well so he's just very comfortable with just having it all out on the table um but it was definitely to our advantage. I mean, I think one of the things that this film is, is appear behind the curtain inside the life of a celebrity beyond, I think, where cameras may have previously gone before. It's really an inside look at Hollywood, a behind the curtain look at the tragedy of celebrity in many ways. Um, and so as much as this film is a love letter to wrestling and a redemption story, it was also like, I think really gracious of David to lay it out for, for people to see like the struggles that, that he was going through, because I think ultimately this film is going to be, able, it's going to offer like support to people and help to people. I think it's going to be inspirational for people to see like what's possible when you're at the end of your rope. Cause like when we started this production, David kind of was at that stage. He was, you know, he'd gone through a lot of very serious health issues. He was struggling with mental issues and he decided to turn his life around and get back on track. And that's pretty much what the film documents is that, that run that he did. And now David's like doing really well. Like he's back on track. His, his, you know, his outlook's really good. He's very positive. His career's starting to take off again. So like, I think ultimately it's a very inspirational story. All right, so I apologize, but on this next question, the audio quality kind of cut out. The Zoom connection was bad. But essentially what I asked David and Price was how they felt as documentary filmmakers balancing their approach, you know, as artists, as directors, with also caring for David Arquette's safety in the middle of some of the more dangerous situations that he found himself in as they were documenting his, you know, come back to wrestling. So there were some extremely close calls, even uh, brushed with death, and um, so that's basically what this question centered around and you'll see how they answered. Um, I think, um, yes, yeah, 
well, that's the, I mean, that's the line that everyone, you sort of walk as a documentary filmmaker. It's that, you know, you have to be observational and you, you know, you want, you need the material on screen. If you're living, you know, if you're following a protagonist uh, throughout the entire journey, you need to be there um, over the shoulder. And I guess that it's a hard line to sort of walk as far as, you know, when someone's in peril, but specifically if you're talking about the death match, I think there was enough, there was enough team around David that we knew there was a, a security safety zone that we could still keep filming and still keep you're basically recording in what is essentially a very barbaric, violent and horrific scene that no one wants to be <laughs> close to. I mean, I know Dog had shards of glass and David's blood on him. And it was something that, I mean, sadist, the sort of sadistic part of a filmmaker is like, oh my God, this looks incredible, you know? Because we know that we're entering hell at that moment. And that's part of that, that sort of, that second act turn in the sort of hour of, you know, the heart of darkness. Oh, darkness. And Sort of want as a filmmaker, <laughs> and for instance, given to us, uh, was kind of the last layer in, um, I guess, the, the film. We knew, we knew, oh, well, if, as long you know, we knew he was going to be okay, um, and just keep rolling. And uh, you know, we're, we're, we're in a way sadistically grateful that he put himself into such a harrowing scene. Uh, for the purpose of of a film and for his journey, you know, as a as a wrestler, he knew that he had to commit completely. And he, in that moment, you see him leave the ring and then go back in because he hasn't been pinned. And you knew, if, oh, if I leave now, I'm going to get another twenty years of like shit from fans. So I've got to go all in. And I, I think that sacrifice is really uh, really apparent. And uh, just watching this ninety minute documentary unfold, I could see the evolution and growth in his personality and in his confidence. And one of his quotes that I really loved, he said something along the lines of, um, I love seeing the way kids see the world, and I hate growing up. But as I was watching this, I kind of felt like I was seeing him return to his roots with that childlike mindset and approach to life. So was that something that y'all in particular noticed throughout the production? Yeah, that was something that we love so much about David. And he, he just embraces that love for for life that only a child has, you know, or a young person has. And like, he genuinely has Peter Pan syndrome. And I think we all have a bit of that, but David's got it in a big, big way. And, uh, you know, for him, I think he'd lost a lot of that allure to life. And, and when we started the project, you saw how overweight he is in the film and how just down and out he is. And so part of this whole project, the film and his return to wrestling was to reclaim that love for life that he had. And I think that's a great observation from you that you do see that transition in his life, that he gets the glint back in his eye by the end of it. And, and, and as I said, you know, outside of the film and the real world, he is doing much better now as a person and his career is coming back. So yeah, it's amazing what you can do. And I think the film is just an allegory for what any of us can do. If we, if we put our minds to it, um, you don't have to go do something as gnarly as go into a death match and put your life on the line. But sometimes that's what it takes. And David's just a great example of what you can do if you put your mind to it. Yeah, also the, the sort of irony that entering your fantasy can save your real world, I think is a sort of um, a kind of, a, you know, leaning on that kind of Peter Pan um, sort of metaphor. It's, it's you know, it's a, it's a message we can all, I don't know, we can all... Uh, and uh, just coming into this film, from my perspective, I wasn't really familiar with the world of wrestling at all. Um, there were just so many things that were kind of, you know, communicated to me just about the sport and about the community that there's no way otherwise I would have known about. So did y'all learn some new things about, um, you know, different personalities, different uh, levels of the wrestling community? Yeah, definitely. I mean, <clears throat> I I'm excited because this film – shows wrestling in a way that I don't think has ever been depicted before. I think if the average person on the street, if you ask them what wrestling is, they'll just think about Hulk Hogan and like the big sort of superstar side of it. Um, but there's a whole underworld and that's really like the, the indie scene is what David really started competing in. And it's so vibrant and it's so widespread. And I think people don't realize that, that every, every weekend all across America, there's these indie matches happening and it's this amazing like melting pot of different people from different walks of life that come together over this 
common shared love for this thing. And um, it's just a wonderful thing that's happening in America. And there's so much nuance to it. And like this film definitely explores that in a really beautiful way. And so I'm excited for people to see wrestling in a completely new light through this film. Yeah, it's also worth mentioning, we were both, like Dog and I were both big wrestling fans in the sort of late 80s, um, you know, in that kind of era of those, of those, those greats when it was slightly more, I guess, uh, cartoony. And then obviously you kind of fall out, you get into music in, in your sort of teens. But like during production, have kind of fallen back in love with it, purely from the indie scene set aside from the WWE main stadium events with the sort of more um, the bodybuilder types. And you just exploring the kind of the fruitful, colorful, flamboyant like characters in the indie scene who are doing it for no money and putting on shows for very small crowds and rec centers all across America and that kind of true Americana sense of we're going you know, to do this for the love and like, for real passion. And just being, uh, not having not been aware that there's so much comedy so much cabaret, so much like diversity. And like, that's something that, um, I mean, we've kind of both fallen back in love with wrestling and especially I live in LA now and there's a great, I mean, not at the moment with the, with the pandemic, but um, you know, with that kind of the, it's called the bar wrestling scene. And you know, you get Macaulay Culk in there and you get all these other characters and locals. And it's just like a really inclusive, fun, uh, sort of theatrical and very violent occasionally, um, sort of uh, entertainment. And uh, I love the way both of you guys shot this film. I think both of y'all were credited as uh, the DP. And uh, I know, David, you kind of have a background in cinematography. But Price, I think this was kind of your first time in that ring. Um, so just there were so many different shots that you were able to compose in, in so many different situations, whether it be the action shots in the ring or just capturing his everyday life or setting up the interviews. So kind of what did it take for you all to get used to that process and get used to um, – just you know keeping on your toes and setting up different shots yeah like we it was very much run and gun production so we wore every single hat we didn't have any sound guys we were doing all our own sound all our own shooting so it's just the two of us mostly we had a few friends help us out in some shots and needed more cameras but um yeah you know just keep it it definitely kept us on our toes I hadn't done a lot of sports production and, and wrestling shooting is like very high energy because you're just moving to keep up with the action constantly around the ring. So that was a lot of fun. Uh, the energy was a lot of fun to shoot like that. Um, but yeah, I mean, Price and I grew up together in England skateboarding um, and we were making skate videos when we were kids. And we learned, I think that's what, when we learned how to shoot and tell stories was just to skateboard as kids. And so nothing's really changed since then we're still doing the same thing we're just filming ourselves and doing everything ourselves um and then i think those skills just are just going to keep transferring throughout our careers yeah it's also i mean dog is a you know he's such a prolific uh sort of dp and camera operator um i learned a lot from him to be honest um i I, I shot music videos myself like years ago. I've done over 40 music videos for pop artists like Incubus and you know, Florence and the Machine and people like that. But I never get to actually hold the camera. You know, you're always working with like DPs. So it was, it was kind of like amazing to be back in it and just with my buddy and we're just, you know, camera operating and having fun. And, uh, and occasionally I would, you know, we would overlap and, you know, we would direct or shoot. And it was just like, once we we had the system from like the, from the outset, and I and I and I, I definitely learned a lot from David. As uh, in the third act, especially, I, I took a lot of the uh, cinematography roles. Um, but yeah, no, it was um, a lot of fun. Well, uh, I know you guys have been doing these all day, and you've got some more interviews along the way. So I don't want to keep you for too much longer. But I uh, just really appreciate y'all taking the time for this, and it was great meeting you, great speaking to you, and I really appreciated your film. Thanks a lot. Man, that's so nice of you to say. We appreciate you too, and thanks for promoting it. Certainly. And, uh, well, I hope you all have a good afternoon, and uh, thanks again. Thanks, buddy. Speak to you soon. Sure.